so today we are going to discuss about secrets of healthy diet okay again i thank all of you for joining this workshop so today's learning objective is we are going to discuss a basic about diet once again can you uh, can you see me yes you can see me thank you so much so today's learning objective is we are going to discuss about basic about diet prevalence of obesity and diabetes what are the causes of obesity and diabetes which is the best diet <clears throat> which is the best way to eat food and uh, something about intermittent fasting okay and those who want to take their health to the next level i'm going to discuss about my community uh, stress management blueprint a gateway to the health and happiness so if you have any questions you can write in the question and answer se uh, se uh, uh, section <clears throat> to briefly introduce myself my name is dr sunil sabre i am basically a pediatric neurologist i am also wellness coach and international best seller author and i have published this book oh stress give me a break which has become international number one best seller and recently i have published a book 17 powerful secret to manage stress during corona pandemic and i am expert and love to do one to one coaching also i conduct a workshop for various corporations and organization on various health related topic i have also had a, a online digital course on stress management so this is my contact uh, email and number if you want to contact you can contact me on this email and number so to start with today's our uh, workshop we are going to first discuss about the burden of the unhealthy diet in this there has been a lot of research in research is found that more than 2.1 billion adults are overweight and 6 650 millions are obese worldwide approximately 2.8 million deaths are reported as a result of uh, being overweight or obese <clears throat> in india more than 135 million individuals were affected by obesity number of overweight and obese people globally has increased from 860 million in 1980 to 2.1 billion in 2013 which is one third of the world's population so there is a steady increase in the number of obese people in this world as well as in india and diabetes currently affect more than 6 uh, 62 million indians which is more than 7% of the adult population so it's uh, actually uh, official figure but Uh, there may be a lot of people uh, which may be more affected uh, by this diabetes and it is said that india is a capital of uh, diabetes and the average of, uh, age of onset of diabetes is 42 years nearly 1 million indian die due to diabetes every year globally an estimated 420 million adults are living with diabetes according to the who in 2016 and the number is projected to double by 2 uh, uh, 2030 uh, uh, and obesity is a major risk factor for non communicable diseases like diabetes hypertension heart attack musculoskeletal disorder like osteoarthritis and various cancers so how to uh, diagnose whether you are obese or not so there are various means where with which you can diagnose yourself whether you are obese or not and the first thing is body mass index okay so how do you calculate the body mass index so first of all you have to measure your weight in kilogram and also measure your height in meter 
and the formula for body mass index is weight divided by height in meter square. So if you uh, do uh, this measurement, then you can calculate the body mass index. And if your body mass index is less than 25, then it is normal. But if it is between 25 to 30, it is overweight and more than 30 is obese. So body mass index is a one method with which you can calculate whether you are obese or not. But if two person are having same body mass index, but their obesity may be different. Okay. So in the research, it's found that the central obesity is most important cause of diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. So the fat around the abdomen is a bad. So the waist to hip ratio is a better measurement of central obesity. So you can see if the body is like a apple shape, then it is bad while pear shape, it is a better. So how to calculate this waist to hip ratio. So you have to take your waist circumference just below the umbilicus or at the level of umbilicus and you have to take the hip circumference. Okay. So you have to divide your waist uh, circumference by hip circumference and the WHO states that if the waist to hip ratio is more than 0.9 in male and 0.85 in female is obese. So why these diseases like obesity and diabetes are increasing? So Edward Stanley said, those who think they have no time for health eating will soon, will sooner or later have to find times for illness. Okay. So because of the unhealthy dietary pattern, these disorders are increasing. So I would like to take you to the history of human diet. What our ancestors used to eat. And our ancestor, when they used to live in a jungle, then they used to eat fruit, root, nuts, and berries. Okay. With the advent of a uh, rudimentary weapon made from the stone, they, was, they started hunting the animals and sta started eating the meat. Okay. And then, then came the fish. But with the agricultural revolution, they started eating the cereal, pulses, fruits, roots, and vegetable. So the, till this time, there were less incidents of obesity and diabetes. But when the industrialized age started, then the dietary pattern completely changed. And we have started consuming more of uh, refined carbohydrate, more of animal protein, which is processed, more of high fructose corn syrup containing cold drinks and processed food and a uh, lot of refined carbohydrate. And that, that has resulted in increasing the incidence of obesity and diabetes. <clears throat> now you can see this graph, it is showing, <clears throat> excuse me, it's showing <clears throat> the diet of primitive man and the modern man, excuse me. You can, <clears throat> you can see, <clears throat> The primitive man used to eat vegetable fruits, roots, legume, and nuts. So 99% of its, uh, his diet <clears throat> was uh, unprocessed vegetable, fruit, roots, and legumes, and nuts. But the modern man, you can see this 99% has reduced to 23%. And now we have started eating more of refined and artificial sugar, sweetener, and more of refined grain. So this shift in the dietary pattern has resulted in increase in the incidence of this obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. So as long as humans were consuming the unprocessed whole food and meat, there were rare cases of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. But once the human being started eating so-called the Western diet consisting of refined carbohydrate, sugar, cold drinks, <clears throat> processed meat, the incidence of this obesity, heart disease, and cancer has increased exponentially. Now, what are the causes of this obesity, diabetes? Now, initially, we used to think that eating excessively and not exercising was the main cause. But new research says that the hormonal hormones are responsible for this obesity. And the main hormone here is insulin and cortisol. So the underlying cause of the obesity and diabetes is the insulin resistance 
and increase in cortisol. So why this insulin is increasing? <clears throat> so this insulin is increasing because we are consuming more of refined fattening carbohydrate, more of animal processed meat, wheat, which is super carbohydrate. Wheat is not a problem, but the way we are eating means initially the, we used to eat wheat, which was uh, 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 prepared with the help of ground stone so that the fibers and the fat used to remain there and the glycemic index was less. But with the modern milling, we are removing the husk, we are removing the fiber and fat. And what we get is a very refined powder of wheat, which has a, a very high glycemic index. So wheat is also a problem. We are consuming a lot of high fructose corn syrup, which is there in the cold drinks and a lot of processed food and the sauce and other things. And cortisol is increasing because of the stress. So because of the increase in insulin, cortisol, there's increased incidence of obesity, high triglyceride, low LDL, hypertension, diabetes, fatty liver, which is called as a disease of civilization. So this is because of insulin resistance. Now this graph is showing how the insulin and its relation with the diet, okay? So when we eat, suppose we eat at a breakfast, the insulin is secreted by the beta cells of pancreas and its level is elevated. So what this insulin does, this insulin acts like a key on the cell surface. The insulin goes and attach itself on a cell surface. The gate are opened for the glucose. The glucose enter in the cell and it is utilized for the energy. Okay. So that's why the blood sugar is maintained. So when we eat, for example, when we eat for the breakfast, the level of insulin increases, but after a few hours, the level falls, okay? Again, in the lunch, we eat, the level of insulin increases for a few hours, and afterward, it becomes normal. It goes below the baseline. <clears throat> Again, in the dinner, we eat, the level of insulin increase, and after a few hours, it is below the normal level. So if we eat two to three times per day, we are in 50% insulin dominant and 50 per uh, time insulin deficient state, okay? So our ancestor used to eat like that. But due to modern eating habit, we are eating more frequently. We are eating five times, six times, seven times, whole day we are eating, uh, we are just having tea, uh, cookies, uh, biscuit and uh, other things. So what happens? The level of insulin is consistently elevated in our body. And the, the rule of body is that any substance which is consistently elevated in our body leads to insulin resistance or a resistance to that particular substance. So as the insulin is consistently elevated in a body, it leads to the insulin resistance, okay? So modern man is 80% insulin dominant and 20% insulin deficient state. That is the cause of insulin resistance and this Insulin resistance is responsible for all this obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. So we have already discussed the problem about wheat. Wheat is not an issue, but the way we are eating is a problem. And we are eating a lot of high fructose corn syrup. So these are artificially prepared, which is present in a lot of processed food. And this high fructose corn syrup raises the insulin level, lead to de novo fat synthesis, which lead to obesity and diabetes, okay? And it is a main ingredient of processed food, various syrup and cold drinks. So it is better you use simple sugar, but the high fructose corn syrup is extremely dangerous for the health. So various companies fool us that their product do not contain sugar, but in fact, they contain more of high fructose corn syrup, which is bad than the sugar itself. So which is the best diet? So there are various, you might have been bombarded by the advice that eat low fat diet, eat low carbohydrate diet, eat high fat, uh, high protein diet, eat ketogenic diet, eat Mediterranean diet. So you might be bombarded with this kind of a advice. So you may be confused what diet one should e uh, eat. Now there has been research done on various culture and their dietary pattern. and the incidence of diseases in that particular culture. And uh, the research was done on the migrating population. So when these people migrated from their 
local community to city. So what happened to their dietary pattern and the incidence of disease? So this study was quite startling. Okay, so take the example of Eskimo. The Eskimo are meat eater. The vegetable part of their diet is meager one, but there is a less incidence of chronic disorder like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Now take the example of Maasai tribe, which is pastoralist. They eat uh, milk, meat, and blood, and rarely eat fresh vegetable. See, hypertension and obesity is almost non-existent in them. Okay. Take the ex example of Okinawa. These people live in uh, Japan. They have the highest lifespan in the world. They are the part of a blue zone. The blue zone is a part on the world where the people usually live active life till 80, 90, 100 years. Okay. And 80% of their diet constitute carbohydrate. So you have seen that the Eskimo eat most of the fat, the Maasai tribe eat most of the protein, and the Okinawa eat most of the carbohydrate. So the protein, carbohydrate, fat is not a problem. As long as we are eating unprocessed food, it doesn't cause any disease. Even if it contains high fat, high carbohydrate, or high protein, provided that it has to be prepared naturally and there has to be unprocessed food. So these people, even if they have a high fat or carbohydrate protein, as they are eating unprocessed food, their level of insulin is less in them. So that's why there is less insulin, so they don't have this chronic disorder. But when these people migrated to city and started eating so-called Western diet, which consists of a lot of refined carbohydrate, a lot of processed protein, a lot of high fructose corn syrup, the incidence of obesity, diabetes, heart disease increased exponentially in them. The good thing is that if the people, those people who have obesity, diabetes, if they reverse and improve their dietary habit, if they sw uh, switch to the traditional diet, unprocessed diet, then the risk of obesity can be reduced by 80%, diabetes can be reduced by 80% and colonic cancer can be reduced 70%. So it is reversible. Our body has a huge, huge healing capacity provided that it needs to be given proper fuel. So what one should eat to remain healthy. So according to the nutrition expert, Michael Pollan, our understanding about the nutrition is in infancy. We do not know what is good for us, but we definitely know what is bad for us. And that is Western processed food containing diet. This reductionist approach, dividing food into protein, carbohydrate, fat, and then removing it. And then uh, 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 by doing process and Selling it commercially has caused more problem. Okay. So for example, beta carotene in a carrot is very good for health. But if you remove the beta carotene from the carrot and give as a form of pill, it has no beneficial effect. In fact, it has a bad effect. In the research, those who have given a beta carotene uh, developed cancers. So beta carotene is good in carrot, but if you put it, uh, pull it out from the carrot and give it in the form of pill, it is a bad because they are more neuron in our gut than the brain. So we have given our good name to few nutrients and bad name to other. For example, omega-3 fatty acid is good. Beta carotene is a good. Okay. And the saturated fat is bad. Omega-6 fatty acid is a bad. This kind of nutritionism has caused more problem. This reductionist approach has most caused more problem and led to this disorder. So the macronutrient content like a protein, uh, carbohydrate, fat. Okay, so these are not problem. The response, the insulin response to what we eat is responsible for the increase in the, this disorder. More the insulin than more the uh, incidence of this obesity, diabetes and heart disease. So the toxicity doesn't lie in fat, carbohydrate and protein, but it lies in processing of the food. Okay, so Michael Pollan says, till the time the science of nutrition do not get mature enough to tell us what we should eat. We should eat 
then we have to look toward our grandparents and the way they used to eat. They, what our ancestors and grand, grandparents used to eat because it, their food was culturally suitable for them. They used to eat unprocessed food and they used to eat before sunset. They used to eat two to three times per day. Okay, so the best thing, if you want to know which is the best diet, you have to ask to your grandparents or some senior citizen what they used to eat okay, and how they used to eat. If you eat in that particular way, then it would be the most healthy way till the science of nutrition is developed. So one should eat food, not too much, mostly planned. So the summary lies in this one sentence. If you want to know which is the best diet, we have to eat food, okay, not too much and mostly plants. So one should eat whole and unprocessed food, colorful fruits and vegetable, salad, sprouted beans, cereal, pulses, which are fiber rich, cheese, desi ghee and brown rice, okay? As far as carbohydrates is concerned, one should eat complex carbohydrate, but no simple sugar. As far as protein is concerned, try to avoid animal protein, eat maximum vegetable protein. As far as fat is concerned, avoid refined vegetable oil. This refined vegetable oil undergo various process in which 10 chemicals are added and removed. So this refined vegetable oil is highly inflammatory. Okay. Also avoid trans fat, which is present in a processed food, avoid delta. Eat fat, which is naturally present in a food. Okay. So eat oil, which is uh, prepared with the help of this, what is called as ghana. Okay. So it is not unrefined, and you can, <clears throat> as it is very expensive, you can use in a small quantity, or you can use a desi ghee as well. So eat fat, which is naturally present in a food. Eat food, which is grown on healthy soil. Okay. So try to use food, which is organically prepared, not with the help of fertilizer or insecticide. Eat some food, which has been pre-digested by bacteria, like uh, bacteria or fungi, like yogurts or dye because they are good source of vitamin B12 and they contain probiotic. That is a good bacteria, which cover our gut and help in digestion, in various metabolic processes, and in our immunity. Eat sweet food as you find in a nature. For example, sugar in a nature is always packed with the fiber, which slow its absorption and reduces its glycemic index and gives you sense of satiety. Okay, so that's why you should uh, eat fruits rather than having a fruit juice because in a fruit juice we remove the fibers which food one should avoid so one should avoid caffeinated sugarated drink junk food sweet fried food which contain trans fat excess salt dalda ice cream polished rice or maida and margarine okay avoid packaged food because it contains lots of chemical which is bad for our health. What happens during processing, the fat and fiber is removed. The vitamins are removed from the food and a lot of chemicals and preservative is added. A lot of sugar is added to compensate the taste because we remove a fat while processing it. And a lot of coloring aging is added so that it looks good. And it is packaged in a plastic uh, cover. So, all this ingredient is extremely bad for our health. Avoid sugar in any form. As far as wheat is concerned, do not eat refined flour. Do not try to remove the husk and do not eat maida. And avoid bread. Now, how to eat? Okay, so we have seen we have to eat unprocessed food, which contains cereal, pulses, green leafy vegetable, fruit, rut roots, nuts, how to eat. Now we have seen that with each eating, our insulin level increases, okay? But as we are eating more frequently, it is causing insulin resistance. Okay. So we have to eat with a window of eight to 10 hours so that our body, the beta cell get rest for remaining 14 to 16 hours, okay? so. We should eat two to three times in a window of eight to 10 hours. For example, you should have a breakfast, then lunch, and try to have a 
dinner before six o'clock. If it is not possible, then you can skip your dinner twice a week. Okay. So stop frequent snacking. Eat two to three times in a short window of eight to ten hours. And this way you can do intermittent fasting, which is the simplest way, and you can keep yourself away from all this disorder. Water intake is also important for maintaining health. Okay, so drink at least 10 glass of water, have a sip of water regularly and do not wait till you are thirsty. Now, few, there are few rules regarding the eating. If you follow this, then it would be a great health for you. Stop eating just before you are full. Okay, so what we, we do, we eat a lot of food, we stuff our stomach with a lot of food and we overeat, overeat and it is a cause of all this problem. So in the research, it said that you should have a slightly caloric restriction, which will increase your longevity and decrease all this disorder. Hmm? Eat when you are hungry, not when you are bored. So food is to gain the energy. It is not uh, to, for the entertainment or when you become bored or depressed. So eat when you are hungry, but not for any entertainment. So we keep on watching television and keep on eating and we go party and we eat. So when you, whenever you're hungry, if there is a natural cue, if the body sends you signal that you're hungry, then that time you should eat. Eat slowly. Because when you eat, after 15 to 20 minutes, the gut sends signals to the brain that it's you have to stop. Okay. Till that time, if you eat fast, then you will land up eating more food. Okay. So, and the brain won't send signal, uh, the, the gut won't send signal to the, uh, the, uh, the brain. So eat slowly. Buy smaller plates and glasses. In the research, it's found that when the size of plate has reduced, okay, the caloric consumption is also reduced and the incidence of obesity and diabetes is also in, uh, reduced in that particular family. Breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. So you have to eat according to the level of activity. Whole day we are active, that time you can eat a lot of food. But after sunset, our level of activity reduced and also the, our metabolic rate reduced. So after sunset, whenever whatever you eat, it is stored as a fat. So try to eat before sunset. And if it is not possible, at least try to skip two uh, a dinner per week. Avoid snack. We have discussed that the snack can in a lot of uh, the process of uh, this processed food contain a lot of chemicals and doesn't contain nutrients. Prefer eating at dining table. Okay, so what happens? We eat on a table uh, while we are chatting, we are eat while we are watching television and we land up eating more foods than required. So if you have a tiny, uh, if you have a right shield that we will only eat on dining table, then you will have a limited intake of food. Try not to eat alone because when you are eating with other people, then you try to eat less. And if you are eating alone, then you try to eat a lot of food. Treat treats as treat. Okay. For example, when you have to have a treat, you have to prepare a lot of food and it is very time consuming. But the corporation has made this easy. The cake is available. The pastries are available. Ice cream is available. All the foods are available. And you don't have to do any efforts as it is available then you try to consume and treat yourself more frequently okay so if you want to give treat to yourself or other try to prepare if you are, uh, want to celebrate then you try to prepare the cake yourself ice cream yourself so that it is so cumbersome that you will eat infrequently okay and try to cook yourself the when you have given outsource your cooking to the corporation that has caused all the problem Okay, when whenever you want to eat what it, what that packaged food or industrialized food, then you have to keep in a mind this principle. Okay, so I would advise not to eat any processed industrialized packaged food. But if you still insist that yes, sometime I want to eat, then you have to keep these things in your mind. Okay, so first is don't eat anything your great grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. Can your grand grandmother recognize burger, chips, and pizzas? 
it was not available okay so if she says no it was not available then it is a bad for your health avoid food products containing ingredient that no ordinary human would keep in the pantry okay so ethoxylated diglyceride cellulose xanthan gum calcium propionate ammonium sulfate if you wouldn't cook with them yourself then why let other use this ingredient to cook for you so you won't use this ingredient so don't allow other industries to use for you okay avoid food product that contain high fructose corn syrup we have seen that the corn, high fructose corn syrup is very bad for our health avoid foods that have some form of sugar or sweetener listed among top 3 ingredients okay avoid food products that contain more than 5 ingredients avoid food products that makes healthy claim so if the advertise food products they make lot of healthy claim that you will become slim fit then avoid this product avoid food products with world like light the term like low fat or non fat in their names it means that it contain excess sugar and salt okay we have seen that the food contain protein fat and carbohydrate if you remove fat while processing then it become tasteless then to maintain the taste you have to add more sugar so if if the food contain low fat then you have to think that it contain a lot of sugar and salt which is very bad for your health avoid food when you <coughs> you see advertise on television because television and the advertisement is meant to sell the packaged food okay the apple won't be advertised on the or vegetable won't be advertised on the television because the corporation do not get benefit from it so whatever food which is advertised on television is not good for your health whenever you visit the uh, supermarket shop at the periphery of the supermarket and stay away from the middle because the middle contain lot of lot of processed food while the periphery contain vegetable fruits and unprocessed food it only food that will eventually rot now i'll tell you i'll ask you if you prepare food how long it last if you prepare food in the morning it may not last till evening because whatever nutrients are there in the that food the bacteria start consuming it okay so bacteria fungi they are are competitor for this nutrient food and take the uh, uh, means example of the processed food it will last for months why even bacteria and fungi do not want to eat that fruit okay so they are so intelligent bacteria and fungi are so intelligent that they won't eat that packaged food because they contain it doesn't contain any nutrients okay so those food which eventually rot rot is good for you otherwise th those food which do not rot is a bad for you eat only food that has been cooked by human and not by corporation now how much to eat so various religion and various study also shows that you should eat almost 75 to 80% of your stomach capacity not more than that if you have a slight caloric restriction you are the healing gene or the gene what is called a sirtuin gene is stimulated which help in repairing the damaged dna and increase your longevity okay so you have to have a slightly caloric restriction slightly protein restriction okay it is advertised that you require 1 gram of protein you require high protein to maintain health it is a uh, absolutely wrong in fact a little less protein and vegetable origin protein is very essential for longevity and maintaining health now few words about intermittent fasting okay so so in the research it is found that those people who do dieting means they reduce the caloric intake their met basal metabolic rate reduce and their weight also they again regain the weight so that's why the dieting fail because when you reduce the calorie your basal metabolic rate reduce your heart rate temperature reduce you feel very lethargic inactive then you stop that dieting that's why the dieting fail okay so the only way you can reduce your obesity and reverse diabetes is by intermittent fasting and it is proven by bariatric surgery in the research we have seen that the bariatric surgery reduce the weight and sometimes cure diabetes so what is bariatric surgery it is nothing but surgically enforced fasting 
So if you want to lose weight or reverse diabetes, so why don't why do you want to undergo knife and undergo surgery, which is irreversible? You should better way do intermittent fasting, which gives similar result to the bariatric surgery. So in the research, it is proven that the intermittent fasting can reduce weight, increase insulin sensitivity, reduce insulin resistance, <clears throat> can cure diabetes and reduce the chance of metabolic syndrome. In the research, it is found that during fasting, there's an increase in the process known as autophagy. Now, three years back, a scientist who discovered this phenomenon called as autophagy received Nobel uh, uh, Prize. So what is this autophagy? Autophagy is a mechanism by which the cell get rid of the dead and the disease organelle and uh, uh, synthesize the uh, new organelle. So it is like a rejuvenation of the cell and body. And this process of autophagy is increased by intermittent fasting. Okay, so during fasting, try to use only fruits, sprouted bean, nuts, and green tea. Okay, so I have told you the best way to do intermittent fasting is you should eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner before six o'clock. Then for 14 hours, you will fast. If it is not possible, try to skip a two dinner per week. Okay, as many dinner you can uh, if it is possible to skip more dinner then it is good for your health and if you are more obese if you are more having more diseases more intermittent fasting is the best way to reverse this disorder so dear friends to summarize today's session the incidence of obesity diabetes is progressively increasing all over the world till date the concept about obesity is that the obesity is because of excess eating and less exercise but with the new research, it is found that this theory is not true to the certain extent. The new research says that the obesity is because of the hormonal imbalance known as hormonal theory of obesity. And it is proven in the recent research that excess insulin and insulin resistance and excess cortisol is responsible for obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. So why this insulin is increasing and why it is causing insulin resistance? The insulin is increasing because we are consuming more sugar, refined and processed carbohydrate okay and why insulin resistance is occurring because we are eating too frequently and why cortisol is increasing because of the chronic stress okay so you want to know various stress management technique you can go to my youtube channel and there you can find various stress management technique as well low fat diet with various health organizations still recommend for obesity diabetes and heart disease is complete failure and was based on misinterpretation of data and unintentionally caused more harm. In the fact, new research suggests that saturated fat in a natural form is good for health. What is bad for our body is a trans fat and refined vegetable oil, which we consume. There is a wide variation of food the people consume across the world. Some consume 80 to 90 percent of fat, some consume 80 to 90 percent of the protein, and some consume 80 to 90 percent of the carbohydrate. Still, they, have, they are healthy and incidence of chronic disease and cancers are very less in them. But when these people started eating so-called Western diet containing excess carbohydrate, sugar, salt, sugar containing cold rings and packaged food, the incidence of chronic disease increased exponentially. So these diseases are not because of excess fat or excess protein or excess carbohydrate, but because of refining and industrial processing of food and excess sugar. The food we should eat is whole unprocessed cereal, pulses, beans, sprouted beans, vegetable, fruits, roots, yogurts. We should eat from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. or any eight hour window so that pancreas and insulin get rest for 16 hours so that the insulin sensitivity is maintained. One should eat 70 per, 75 to 80% of the capacity of the stomach. We should do intermittent fasting to keep ourselves fit. We should do light walking after eating. We should completely avoid packaged food, sugar containing and caffeinated cold drinks, junk food, refined carbohydrate, trans fat, high fructose corn syrup. We should avoid frequent snacking. Avoid animal food, poultry, which is grown with the help of hormones and antibiotic because it enters the food chain and causes various diseases. Prefer organic food as far as possible. 
Avoid vegetable and fruits which are grown with the help of fertilizer and insecticide as these are carcinogenic. Prefer food good on organic farm. So thank you so much for being here. And this session is open for question and answer. Thank you so much for he being here. So now this session is open for question and answer. Now this session is open for question and answer. If you have any question. So Dr. Samir has asked, those who remain awake, they eat more in night and thus obese. Absolutely. More frequent you eat, the more chances of insulin resistance and more chance of obesity. Absolutely right. So if you eat after sunset, it in the research it is found that if you eat after sunset, the, all the fat, uh, all the calories is stored in the form of fat. And if you eat after six o'clock, there is a progressive increase in the blood pressure. Okay, so that's why it's very essential to eat before breakfast, uh, before a sunset. Thank you so much, Lynn, for joining. Dr. Samir has asked, zero cholesterol written on some junk food. Is it good? First of all, this cholesterol business is absolutely sham. Now, this study, which is called as Framingham study, which started in 1948 by Harvard Medical School in a town in Framingham, and then it, it, it's a uh, uh, scope was increased and then consequently it was uh, done over uh, almost five continents and they came to conclusion that the fat increases cholesterol and the cholesterol causes atherosclerosis and atherosclerosis causes heart attack. Now this has this theory was based on the wrong data it was misinterpreted and now when the scientists are reinterpreting they found that there is no relation between the fat and cholesterol, no relation between cholesterol and atherosclerosis. Okay, because they found that, take the example of Eskimo, they eat 80 to 90% of the fat, but the incidence of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease and atherosclerosis is very less. Okay, now 80% of the cholesterol is synthesized in body and 20% is from what we consume. So if you eat less cholesterol, it will, uh, the body will synthesize. Okay, so, and whatever the atherosclerosis plague, uh, which is there on the uh, uh, coronary artery, it is not because of the cholesterol. It is because of the, what is called as oxidized cholesterol. Okay, and the cholesterol level is not responsible for that atherosclerosis. The atherosclerosis is because of, first of all, insulin resistance. Second, because of generalized body inflammation. And this inflammation is because of stress because of the pollution, because of uh, refined uh, food we are eating, because of the sugar, because of the highly processed refined oil. So this causes generalized inflammation, including the endothelial inflammation. And this endothelial inflammation causes damage to the endothelial wall, exposing the submucosa. And when it comes in contact with blood, it leads to the formation of what is called as oxidized cholesterol. So cholesterol itself is a not problem. The oxidized cholesterol is a problem because of the generalized inflammation in the body. So cholesterol is absolutely sham. It doesn't cause heart disease. So I hope Dr. Samir, I've answered your question. So any junk food is bad for your health, which I have already explained. So, 
thank you lean you said that thank you very much it was very informative you will share recording yes i'll share the recording as well yes is it that eating once a day in the noon can be called as intermittent fasting yes so intermittent fasting is what happens in the research it's found that if you reduce your caloric intake the body will reduce its metabolic rate if you reduce your uh, 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 caloric intake over a period of time the body will adjust it will reduce its heart rate it will reduce its temperature basal metabolic rate and you will feel lethargic lousy and that's why all the people then they uh, just forget about the uh, the uh, uh, dieting now what the fasting is the if you are eating normally and sometime you skip your dinner okay and next day you eat your body knows that hey even if yes uh, today he is not eating tomorrow i will be getting uh, whatever nutrient so what happens it doesn't reduce, reduce its metabolic rate it keep on having its metabolic rate and when you eat okay the glucose go, goes in your body it is utilized and the excess uh, glucose is stored as a glucagon in your liver and when you are not eating this glucagon come is broken down to glucose and used as energy and this glucagon store can last for 24 hours so if you want to reduce your fat you have to first utilize this glucagon and then the fat is used as a source of energy and this is done when you do intermittent fasting if you do intermittent fasting then when your glucagon uh, store is exhausted your body will use the fat as a source of energy and that's why you will lose the body fat and the weight would be reduced and the diabetes is reversed so eating in a once day in a noon can be called as intermittent fasting and which is very good for our health write in the chat box how did you find the session what you learned any questions if you have till that time i am going to discuss shortly about my community i have started this health and happiness community the code of honor of my community is holistic health mindfulness and awareness environmental protection leadership continuous daily improvement and contribution to the society so why i started this community 5 years back my health was in a bad shape okay i had i was completely stressed out and burnt out i had put on 10 kg of weight and i was looking much older than my chronological age then i stopped i introspected i read a lot of book on spirituality on holistic health and self help book i formulated certain principle i utilized it and it completely transformed my life i lost 10 kg of weight my work efficiency improved i started looking much younger than my chronological age okay so i started sharing this this knowledge by conducting various live workshop and during this corona pandemic i am conducting this online workshop on various health related topic and i am on a mission to inspire 2 million people about stress it adverse effect chronic disorders and how to manage it effectively so as to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life so i am conducting this kind of a live workshop before corona pandemic for various organization various colleges various uh, doctor association like indian medical association and indian academy of pediatrics for various government organization non governmental organization on radio so i have published a book on holistic health o oh stress give me a break which has become international number one best seller on amazon and recently i published a book 17 powerful secret to manage stress during corona pandemic so my journey was like this and five years back i fall in this valley but after reading introspection and formal, uh, in, uh, implementing certain principle i came out of this valley okay so but it is very time consuming i want to act like a bridge so that those who do not want to fall in this valley or those who are in this valley come out fast i can help them okay so 
if you are stressed, if you have chronic disorder like obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer, mental disease, and want to reverse it, or if you do not want to have these disorders in your life at all and want to prevent them, if you want to lose weight or reverse diabetes, if anybody in your family has a chronic disorders, if you want to lead healthy, happy, more fulfilling and professionally successful life, then you can join my community. And I'm expert and love to do one-to-one -one coaching because I'm working with various corporates, entrepreneur and industry leader to help them manage stress with various stress management techniques, which are easy to follow and implement so that they can lead healthy, happy, productive and more fulfilling life. And as a result of awesome health, they can get exponential growth in their professional life. I also conduct workshops for corporation and organization, and I provide my audience with the tool to empower them to reclaim their health and attain success. I have an online digital course on stress management, which is a video-based course. So if you want to book my one-to-one -one coaching or workshop for your organization, then you can contact me on this email or my this phone number, or you can visit my website. So this is on the screen. Okay, so a lot of people has been uh, helped by this kind of workshop. Thank you, Samir, good information, thanks. So if you have any questions, you can write in the chat box. And how did you find, what, what were your uh, takeaway from today's workshop? Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Vandana, great workshop, thanks. Thank you so much for the feedback. If you have any questions, you can write down in the chat box. If you have any suggestion, you can write in the chat box as well. If there is no questions, so thank you so much, all those who are there on Facebook, live on the Zoom. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. I am now ending this workshop. Thank you so much.